my mother had two children. Uh, my sister, oldest sister, was born in uh, 1937. My oldest brother was born in 1940. And uh, after she had my oldest brother, uh, she had uh, an allergic reaction to uh, some hair dye that she was using. And uh, it almost killed her. After she was starting to get better, she got sicker again, and she uh, told us that she had to have a uh, operation where she couldn't have children no more. After she had that operation in 1947, my other brother was born. And then in 1950, I was born. In 1952, my youngest sister was born. Now with my brother that was born in 1947, uh, the doctors were amazed. Uh, she was not supposed to be able to have children. And then the same thing went with me, and then again with my sister. So we grew up being called miracle babies. They had quite a few things uh, about people in the family that uh, had uh, psychic abilities and that type of thing in my father's side also. Around the late 1950s, uh, they had a, a UFO flap, I think they call it, uh, out of uh, Lockbourne Air Force Base uh, south of Columbus. And uh, my mother and brother-in-law, Paul Friend, he's passed away, so is my mother, uh, were going through a small town called Bryce. And uh, they spotted a uh, jet being tailed by a, a UFO. And they assumed that the pilot uh, saw the UFO because of the way it was flying and trying to uh, get away from it. That was probably the first time that I remember them talking about that type of thing because they didn't really like to tell us about it. They like to keep all the good stuff away from the kids. The government denied anything that was going on back then, but, uh, but they saw what they saw. Like I said, my dad liked to uh, uh, keep a lot of this, a lot of the activities away from the kids. But uh, we had a lot of strange things happening. Uh, we uh, lived on a farm, and we had you know, 50 to 100 chickens. And uh, one night, uh, there was a lot of ruckus outside, and uh, my dad and my brother Joe went out to see what it was and uh, they took a shotgun with them and uh, what I was told because I was never allowed to see it was that uh, something killed all of our chickens and laid them on the floor in a line and my dad said that he's never seen anything that that's ever done anything like that before uh, he got a look at it when it was uh, leaving, and he took a shot at it, and uh, he said that uh, it was uh, uh, either the biggest raccoon that he has ever seen or a small bear. And uh, from that time on, we had a lot of activities. We moved to... Uh, uh, a small town called uh, Asheville, Ohio, uh, and uh, right off the bat we started having a lot of uh, sightings. 
in activity uh, that was Patsy and Terry and myself. We also found a lot of uh, branches that had uh, like a little living area inside that was uh, we found all the time over the years around wherever, wherever we lived. And now that I have experienced a lot of the things that I have experienced, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it was what I'm calling a uh, hairy man, as in hairy mankind, these beings that are hairy. Uh, now I believe that, that, uh, that uh, I have experienced uh, a number of things that has happened that directly puts uh, what the, who they're calling Bigfoot uh, has a direct connection to Hairy Man. I believe they're the same species. I believe they're hybrids of uh, human beings and a different type of alien that uh, I don't hear anybody talking about that I saw, which is a, uh, a hairy alien. They look different than Bigfoot or the hybrids. They have hair over most of their body except for their faces, uh, long hair, long wavy hair, wavy not curly, okay. Uh, now this is hairy man, the, the hybrids. Uh, they have big round eyes. Now they get those off of the aliens. They're, they're, they're a lot bigger and rounder than our eyes are. Big black pupils. Broad shouldered, broad chested, muscular. They look like they've been uh, shot up with steroids. Uh, the biggest one I've seen was probably about nine foot tall in that general area, and the smallest uh, about two and a half foot tall. I, I think they're bred for certain reasons, whatever that reason may be. And uh, the big ones seem to be uh, like protectors, and uh, I've seen how they uh, how they abduct people, and uh, usually a big one will come in with a number of smaller ones in a team. And okay. one, and, and in that team, okay, the smaller ones. There's one type that that their eyes are a lot closer together than the rest of them, and I believe that they're more. Uh, uh, mesmerizing than the other ones. Like they have special abilities. Yeah, when, when they've abducted me, there would be uh, between four and six of the small ones would always come and get me. But I, I recognize them. I, I think that they're like my children. They told me that, that some of them are my children. So yeah, the ones that I saw, the hair is uh, coal black and shiny. And I mean blacker than black, and uh, uh, wavy. Uh, I believe they get the waviness from the alien because I saw them pretty good. And uh, like I said, it's telling you about the big round eyes, and they get their eyes from the aliens also. Uh, the aliens has longer thicker hair than the hybrid. And the waviness in the aliens is their hair goes like like a snake. Vertically down? Yeah, straight down and like rows of it like that. Yeah, one right after the whole the whole thing. Their whole body is is very very hairy. They they have two arms, two legs, uh, 
it hangs straight down and it's real tight waves and in the face area there's no hair in their face area it's cut or grows down so far that it stops it's almost blocked out blocked like this here and then goes back into their whole body with the hair they look a lot like in the face like uh, uh, like what they're saying that Bigfoot looks like the not the ones with the pointed uh, uh, eye teeth or anything like that. Some say canines <laughs> uh, because they're flat. Their teeth are different. They're like our teeth, perfect teeth, but, but, but they're, there's no eye teeth. They're all flat, and they're perfect white teeth. Yeah, it's long. It, it's a, uh, if they hold their arm out like this here, it would be really long, long distance. They got long hair, and I kind of refer to this. But uh, there used to be a program on TV where I think they called it uh, uh, Cousin It, <laughs> uh, a hairy. Uh, being on uh, Adam's family, okay. Uh, and I'm not saying that they look like cousin it, but that kind of hair, you know, long, covers the whole body. They all got arms and legs, okay. The difference between the hybrids, uh, the hair isn't as thick or as long or as wavy. But now the hybrids have wavy hair, but but it's you can tell it's a mixture of us and them, the aliens together to get the type of wavy hair that uh, that uh, the hybrid has. The ones that I'm actually calling hairy man is the hybrids. Yeah. What do you call the other? Uh, the hairy aliens. Hairy aliens. <laughs> it was the late 1970s, 76, 77 in there. And uh, I just got back from Ohio. Uh, and... Uh, I was at my mother and father's house, and uh, that's where it started. They started coming and getting me <clears throat> at nighttime, naturally. I woke up or became aware of standing in a area that was dimly lit, sort of a uh, orange, orange, brownish light. And there's a lot of people there, naked people, men and women. And a whole lot of the hairy, little hairy aliens was around. And the first thing that they were doing, it was like they were playing some kind of mind games with us. To, to me, what they were doing was... Uh, uh, conditioning us to be controlled. They turn around and they activate your uh, what's inside of you for fear. Okay, they activate the fear and they can uh, enhance the fear inside of you so great that you're so scared that you can't even scream. You're so scared you can't scream, you can't move, you can't do anything. And so we just stand there and hope to God they leave you alone. And that's what they were installing in us at first, that type of stuff.
mentally. Totally mentally. Now I don't know if that's uh, if it's if it's them that's doing it or if it's mechanical, but somehow or the other, they they mentally communicate with us. When they started conditioning and conditioning us, uh, it's probably two or three weeks. And then there was a break. And then when they started coming back, that's when they were uh, uh, doing medical things to us. When they started doing the medical uh, things to me, that's when I saw the aliens. That's, that's where I could actually tell the difference between the aliens and the hybrids. The aliens were the ones that handled all the tools, all the equipment, and did all the procedures. And the hybrids were just standing around watching her. No, but what they do, the aliens, okay, what they do, when they get you in a line or with around those people, they instruct you to keep looking down towards the floor. Keep your head down, look down all the time. And, and that, that has reoccurred over the years. That, that's a, a standard thing that, that the hairy aliens do and the greys. They, they, and if you somehow or the other put your head up, uh, they're on you like that. They have a, uh, a little small pencil-like uh, device that uh, shocks the hell out of you. <laughs> it does something to your muscles. Well, I, I don't remember the, the hairy aliens doing, doing that, but the greys did. No, it's all mixed together, but the greys and the hairy aliens were never together. It was always separate. I've never seen them together. I've never seen uh, two different types of aliens together unless you consider the orbs a life form. Now the orbs uh, I have seen with uh, the hairy aliens and they're used for a lot of different things. They definitely have a purpose and I don't know if they're a life form or if uh, they're mechanical, but they're under some type of control, definitely. They know what they're doing. Well, when they abducted me, it, what it appeared to be with the hairy aliens, okay, uh, like a building, like a, some sort of uh, uh, humongous warehouse. Uh, uh, I saw dozens and dozens of incubators, what I consider incubators, and uh, the tables. All that seemed to be in a uh, in a uh, uh, like a uh, some type of humongous warehouse environment. Uh, now with the with the hairy aliens, they always seem to have a, uh, a dimmer light than the grays. The grays always has bright lights all over the place. But the hairy aliens was different. Like, like light, bright light might bother them. I wouldn't say that they were nocturnal, but I think the bright light might bother them. They started coming and getting me the hairy aliens around 76, 77. 
event that I had with them in the 80s that I remembered is that I woke up and uh, my wife was not beside me. And I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I'm starting to look around and then uh, a little bit later my wife comes walking through the door and she looked at me and she goes, I let the dog out and I can't get the dog back in. And then she walked over to the bed and fell over the bed like she was totally knocked out. So I, uh, I turned around and, and I thought, dang, go on, you know, uh, we lived in a mobile home park. So I started getting up to get the dog to find out what happened to the dog and then uh, the dog come walking in the house. The door was open, so she come walking in the house. So our dog, Bear was his name, was all crouched up and like, like he'd done something wrong or something. And he came in, laid down, and I figured, you know, didn't think too much about it. And uh, about a few weeks later, I woke up in the middle of the night. My wife was gone. Dog was gone. I was like, what the? And then all of a sudden, I'm getting ready to go outside to find her. And she comes walking through the door. And she goes and says an identical thing. I took the dog outside. You know, uh, I can't get the dog back in. She walked over to the bed and fell down face first, totally out of it. Well, I got up and I'm trying to get, you know, so what happened to the dog? <laughs> so I walk outside and I saw two red eyes at the back of the trailer that was in the darkest part of, of the park. And I thought that was bare. Yelled at him a couple times and didn't come. So I walked down to the back of the trailer to, to where I saw the eyes. And then when I got real close to the eyes, I saw a black object body be behind those red eyes. And it was on the ground, like crouched down on the ground. And the body started moving around a lot. And the, the two eyes, they, they didn't move with the body. They were fixed, and then all of a sudden they started going left to right, left to right, left to right, up and down, up and down, left and right, just like this. And they never moved fr from, from that position. And they weren't shaky, they were straight lines up and down. Scared the crap out of me. When I got there and I saw that and I realized it wasn't my dog, I started backtracking. I backtracked all the way up into that house, get back into that house. And after I got in the house, I'm thinking, my dog. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to go back out for the dog, and he comes walking in. The door and sat down, and I'm looking around. I don't see anything anymore. And, uh, I didn't realize what was going on then, okay, but now I do because I had the same events happen years later, okay, with the perfect movement and all. So I know what, what was going on then. Yeah, I didn't know then what was going on, but I know now what was going on. And I recognize what the red eyes are also. Now, this was happening in... Uh, the 80s. Okay, now I didn't put it all together until around uh, 2011, right in that general area. What they're calling Bigfoot eye shine is not eye shine. They're the orbs. 
what they're calling the orbs, okay, some orbs. Now, they have photos of uh, Bigfoot. Now, this is Bigfoot people, okay. They have uh, photos of uh, what they're calling eye shine, Bigfoot eye shine that they've taken at nighttime. Uh, some of those photos have one eye, what they're calling one eye. They make jokes about, well, this is one eye and things like that. Well, they're trying to rationalize why there's only one eye. Well, it's heads turned this way or it's heads turned that way or this, that, and the other. But that's not it. It's because there's one orb there. And, and the orb is not, the light is not reflecting off of that orb. When you shine a light on them, they absorb that light and they, and they glow. Now, you, you can not even have a light on them and they can glow. Well, let me start at the beginning, okay? Uh, my dog wanted outside. So I went to let the dog out. And I already had a few experiences with the, uh, the oars and the eyes, okay? The dog wanted out. And by this time, after I have seen the, these eyes uh, out in the field behind my house a number of times with my fight flashlight, I have a tendency to shine my light out there. So uh, the dog wanted out. I walked outside and I shined it straight out back and I saw a yellow light. It was about 100 yards across the field. Uh, and I recognized that as being what I thought was one of these oars. So I'm just standing there and all of a sudden that light that yellow light went from 100 yards away to within about 30 feet of me in a second. That yellow light changed into white light and it started moving left to right, left to right, like this here, up and down, left and right, and then it went behind a tree. As soon as, now I didn't have a camera or uh, a camcorder or anything uh, with me, they were inside the house. As soon as it got where I couldn't see it no more, I shot into the house, told the wife what was going on, I grabbed a camera and I went back outside and I turned my flashlight towards the area that I saw it and uh, got my camera set and I'm trying to do everything with two hands. I put the flashlight on the camera, put the camera on the flashlight. That's what I was doing. It's trying to shine it in, the, in the, that direction. And I'm waiting to see if anything would happen. And then all of a sudden, out behind that tree came that light. I call it an orb came out orb, started moving around again like this here, and then it went up in the air, and I'm standing there looking at it, then all of a sudden I saw a dark body about nine foot tall, came from walking behind the tr from behind the trees, straight over to the orb, and it turned and looked directly at me. Two big old eyes now, and they were shining. They looked identical to the orb. You see, the way that, the way that uh, there was. I had the orb here, and I had the, uh, the, the big uh, hairy man standing there with the eyes shining like that. Then that big hairy man turned around, and he, like he put his head like this towards me. You could see it, the darkness of the body. He went like that. And those eyes 
got a little bit bigger and a lot brighter. Now, I don't know if they got bigger because they got brighter or looked like they got bigger, but, but they got brighter and bigger. So here, here I'm standing there, and this hairy man is like this here, with, and you can actually see where it stretched out its head towards me like that. Here's this orb up above it, and all of a sudden the orb started, looked like somebody lit a, uh, a, a sparkler inside the eye. You could see it looked like a sparkler that was going off inside that orb, but not on the outside, but just in, on the inside, like there was some sort of energy there. Harry Man's eyes started doing the same thing. And when I'm standing there, I could see where the light was. All of a sudden, I saw dozens of, of eyeballs back behind it coming towards me. It was coming across the field from where I originally saw the, the yellow orb. They, those uh, eyes came up to the big hairy man and they started lining up behind him. And when they started lining up behind him, they started peeking around him at me. Then, all of a sudden, about five or six of them got in a line to the big guys on his right-hand side. And it was all facing me. And then there's a couple of them on his left hand side. Now, and this is what sets it off. One of them had big eyes that were real close together. Just one of them. Okay? Now, the rest of them, their eyes were further apart. They was all standing there looking at me, and all of a sudden they all go like that. And their eyes got bigger and brighter, and they were in a line. And I'm standing there looking at this, and all of a sudden there's three or four orbs flying around, too. Everything that the orbs did with blinking off and on in this, uh, like a... Uh, eruption of, of energy that's inside them eyes or, or inside those orbs was doing it with the hairy man's eyes. What color were the hairy man's eyes? Uh, they, they were yellow and went to white. You could see that in the dark? With the light. Yeah, oh, we could get the light on them? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, okay, th th there's all in a line and, and they and they was watching me, and these orbs were flying around. Okay. Then I saw one of them, a small one, that uh, he, where he had his head like this, and his eyes were big. All of a sudden, the eyes weren't moving, but I saw movement of his body, like this here. Then he went to, like there's something going on in this field, and he went to turn his head to look. And those eyes were there, and when he started turning his head, the eyes didn't move at first, okay? Like I saw a little bit of movement, then the eyes went. And then, like that. So, my conclusion on this is that this eye glow that the people are seeing is actuality, it's the orbs, and that those orbs are, uh, has multi-uses. And I believe one of the uses is like our night vision, where they can see much, much better. And that's what that was, and they hover they're not attached like glasses. They hover in front of their eyes. 
Now we're talking about people that's a million years or better uh, advanced from us. So they have all types of technologies right. that, that we're just not aware of. Mm -hmm. But those, but the, but that's what those eyes are. And and I'd like to see uh, some smart people get together and investigate that. Research that, right? Yeah, uh, they have. Now, what I did when I first saw this stuff, okay, I I, I never heard of uh, eye shine and or anything like that. Uh, but I started watching some of these uh, Bigfoot uh, documentaries that they have on TV to see if I can if I, if anybody had anything like what I've seen. And I was watching one show, and I heard uh, a lady say, uh, refer to it as Bigfoot Eye Shine. I never heard of it before, so I got on the computer and went in there and put that in the computer. And by gosh, they had all kinds of stuff on there about Bigfoot Eye Shine. Uh, eye Shine, Eye Glow. And I couldn't believe it. They actually had a number of people that got, and, and, and it's on, it, they got it, that has excellent, excellent footage of what I saw. And nobody knows what it is. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yes. Whenever I get involved with a, uh, a uh, UFO investigator, it seems like that kicks in something with these guys. They get real active. I could go without nothing, you know, not being involved with uh, an investigator, and basically nothing a lot, not a lot of stuff goes on, and then when they come into my life, all kinds of things start happening. 